All right, so we're back with another video. This time it's uh, the third leg lock skill you should train as a beginner. And we're going to look at finishing mechanics, how to finish uh, some of the most common leg locks. The reason why I have this as the third skill is because first we need to get our legs tight to even just control the position. Second, we need to get a grip on the foot, right? If we don't have a grip, proper grip on the foot, we can't finish um, the leg lock. We can't create tension in the leg. And this is why finishing mechanics comes as the third step, because now we actually have control over the leg. Our legs are well connected to our partner's uh, leg and our hands are probably connected to our partner's feet. So now we can start doing the actual leg locks. So this will be a longer video. I will put everything in chapters. Um, so I recommend you to watch everything, of course, but you can click to the different chapters and choose the specific leg lock you're looking to finish. But please have in mind that you've got to master, you've got to get the two other skills down, uh, learning to grip with your legs and then to grip with your arms first before you move on to this section. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so the first uh, leg locks we're going to look at are the straight locks. That means that we, we bend, we uh, extend in a straight direction. There's no twisting. Um, leg locks that fall under this category are angle locks and knee bars. Okay, so first let's look at the straight angle lock. So we went over this before and I actually have a separate video on this, but just to cover it, we have uh, a standard leg entanglement here, uh, maybe a standard ashi single leg X configuration, or we could have a butterfly actually here. Um, both can do the job. Okay, from here, what we're looking to do is set the foot tight, set our legs tight, compress everything, and we're gonna go in a straight arch back. So I wanna go from my elbow down to my shoulder, as a bridge along the mat. Everything going straight here. I'm attacking these ligaments here and I wanna extend everything and bend it straight to put strain on this part of the foot here. So I lock my arms up. I go from elbow towards my shoulder and then my hips come up and bridge along the floor, parallel. Continuing like this, uh, we get a great break on the foot here. Always go slow, always make sure your grip is tight with your legs and your arms before you start the extension. Think about we're building tension throughout the leg and then we're increasing that tension by bringing our hips in. Never go fast on these, especially not in training, especially not when you're drilling, get everything down fine. Okay, this goes for all the leg locks. And then let's look at the knee bar. So here knee bar it's kind of the same thing from here the leg is higher up on my body i can either have a grip on the heel here when my palm goes on the heel i can be figure forward here um, the best one is where you have a lat grip here but basically the same thing i want to back heel in with my legs and I want to arch my back. So the foot goes back and the back of her knee goes forward. So let's just take this grip, two hands on the heel, my legs curl in. And again, I'm bridging along the mat here as I bring my chest forward, my shoulders back, and I put my hips in. You can see she taps there. I could Keep going like this. No reason to do this fast and explosive unless you're in a tournament and you really need to at a beginner level. You should just think about controlling everything, curling your heels to your butt here and get a good grip here. here. If you can get the lat grip, that's even better. That's where I transfer and I go across the body. My elbow pinches back and now again I Curl my heels to my butt. I think about opening my chest. My shoulders go backwards and I bridge along the mat. Super strong submission. 
But again, we're just working on a straight break where we try to hyperextend the knee by pushing our hips into it as we bring the heel back. The heel doesn't go back. There's lots, of, there's no tension in the knee, right? The tension comes when this leg, this foot goes back here, locks the knee out, and I put my hips into the knee. Keep everything tight to your body. Okay, so those are the straight locks. There are some variations on these, but I'm not gonna cover it that in this video. That will be for another specific time. Next on, we're gonna look at the toe and the heel. All right, we looked at the straight lock, uh, leg locks where we looked at the ankle lock and the knee bar. Let's go into some twisting locks. Um, let's start on the outside with the toe hold and the outside heel hook. Now these uh, submissions are actually real similar. Um, the leg entanglement I'll choose for this is uh, an outside ashi here where we back heel in. It could also be a regular ashi or a single leg exposition if you like. Um, but let's just use this here. Now what I'm looking to do in both the toe hold and the outside heel hook is I'm looking for force that pushes the toes down and an opposing force that lifts the heel up. Okay, this creates tension in the foot. In the foot. When the foot's in neutral here, there's a lot of movement in the foot. What I'm looking to do is I'm looking to eliminate that movement in the foot. I want everything tensed up. The way I do that is I go by the toes. I'm not grabbing the toes themselves, but I'm grabbing the knuckles right here under the toes. Then I want to turn everything in here. Now there's less mobility in a foot. We're starting to put some tension throughout the foot, right? Now, with the heel hook, we're looking to push this back with uh, our elbow slash triceps and lift the heel with our wrist. In the toe hold, we're looking to do this just with our arms, basically. So with the toe hold, I want to get a good grip on the toes, push them down. <laughs> the toes just pop. We'll keep that in. Push the toes down. Take this other arm here and I want to weave it through where I want to be preferably elbow deep by the heel. Now you can go uh, with thumb in or thumb out. Just like with the Kimura, there's arguments for both. Right? Let's just go without a thumb in. So let's go without the C grip, just this. And I weave through here and grab my own wrist. Now from here, the force comes from me pushing down the toes towards her butt and the lift of the heel by lifting my left elbow. So the left elbow goes up as I push the toes down. When you do this uh, joint lock in training, be really careful. Um, sometimes you can just feel like you just push and push and push and nothing happens. Sometimes you just push a little and someone pops their foot. People have different mobility. Um, I feel like this is one of the most injury prone submissions in the training room. So go really careful with this. It's ways we can transition. Don't uh, put everything on the line just to finish a toe hold, okay? Don't put your partner's uh, foot in risk. So go slow with this move. If you feel like it's not working, go for something else. Okay. Now, that's a toe hold. I'm basically just using my arms for this. For the outside heel hook, we can use our hips as well to bridge into the side of the knee here. So we're gonna add an extra layer to the attack. So I wanna bring my elbow in and I wanna open up her foot, dorsiflex everything. So if her foot's like this, I wanna make it like this here. Create tension this way. So elbow goes back. I pinch in and I put her heel, oh, heel right around my wrist wedge. My legs back heel in here tight. For the heel hook, I want to be on my elbow the entire time. If I go on my shoulder, I lose power and it's easier for her to escape. So I'm going to be on the side of my elbow here. I want to lock my hands. Now you can lock your hands with a standard gable grip or you can go wrist to wrist here where you take your opposite arm here and you want to just put your hand right under where the heel is. From here, your elbow should be pinching into uh, your ribs here. She should feel tension in her foot. 
Now you want to really curl your heels in here. And when you want to think about the same thing with the toe hold. My elbow pushes her toes down and my wrist lifts the heel to my chin. So I want to keep everything tight here. Now that puts pressure on the foot. To put pressure in the knee, I'm thinking about pulling my heels back here tight into her hip. And the side of my leg here, my thigh, pushes on the inside of her knee here. So I'm kind of pushing the knee out as I'm lifting her heel to my chin here. So she should feel tension in her entire leg. I'm really back heeling hard here. I'm lifting the heel and I'm pushing on her knee. So think about the opposing forces here. Toes go back, heel goes up. Hips go in and I'm pushing her knee out. So it's like I'm twisting a, twisting a rag. I'm basically like forcing her hip to rotate this way and pushing her knee this way to put strain on the outer ligaments here. This submission should not be cranked because uh, against good people, you just lose it or just hide the heel and uh, get out. Um, and against just your peers, uh, if you're a beginner or intermediate, uh, you might just hurt them with something. We never want to bridge with this submission when we're doing it in the training room. The bridge is the very last part of this move. You should tap people with tension here. They should feel the tension in their leg and know they're in trouble, right? So everything in, the heel comes to the chin and I'm pushing her knee away from me with the side of my leg here. So my legs are doing this as my arms are doing this. Heel goes towards me, I push her knee away from me. Okay, this twist is what's gonna generate the tension here. And I'll put breaking pressure on her foot and her knee. Okay, so whenever you get someone here, lock everything up real tight, always look at your partner. Okay, so just so they know they're in danger and so you can see if, if they know they're in danger, right? From here, go real, real slow. I, when I finish this, I just back heel real hard and I think about just lifting the heel to my chin gently as I look at my partner. If I feel like maybe I look at them and I just see like just emptiness, they don't know what's going on. At this point, I'm real careful. Like I might just let go. The last thing we wanna do in training is hurt our training partner. We want to look out for our own safety first by tapping early and always airing on the side of caution. And we want to second, always protect our training partner from harm as well. So if I feel like she's going to do something stupid, explode, she has no clue what's going on, I'm always going to let go. I'm always going to ask my coach if it's okay, I do uh, leg locks in the class just so I'm on the safe side, okay? Now, that was a long rant, but this is basically when we start looking at the twisting locks, looking at the toe hold, and looking at the outside heel. Last one is gonna be the inside heel locks. All right, so we looked at the straight angle lock in the knee bar, and we looked at the toe hold and the outside heel hook. And you got a little rant about safety and breaking mechanics. Um, I always have to put this out there, especially um, because there's mostly like beginners watching uh, these videos and I just want to make sure you're safe in the training room. Leg locks are not, not dangerous in themselves, it's how they're applied and how uh, they're uh, respected or not respected in some cases, right? Now, let's look at the inside heel hook as the last lock for this video. Now, on the inside heel hook, I have her leg across my body. Before I had it straight on the outside here. And I'm lifting her heel towards the outside. Now her leg is across my body and her heel is inside both our hips. Okay, this is why we call it the inside heel hook. I have some sort of configuration from here, typically a saddle here. So I want my top leg to align with her inside leg here. Now 
course, we want to make sure our entanglement is tight. So if it's not tight, go back and watch my first leg lock video on this. Then we want to make sure we have a good grip on the heel here. That's in the second video, in case you forgot. So go back and watch that. Now, we want to lock up again and make sure we can get those opposing forces. So it's the same theme, but pushing the toes back, and lifting the heel. And then our hips, this time it's gonna push on the outside of her knee to pressure it to the inside. So toes go back, heel goes up, and our hips push her knees to the inside, very slowly. So wanna get a good grip, lock up, Make sure we have a good back heel. So I'm curling my heels actively to my butt here. Put my chin over the heel, make sure I'm on my elbow. And I'm gonna look to lift her heel to my chin. And then push at the inside of my thigh to her knee here. So this twisting motion, legs being pushed her upper leg is being pushed away from me as I'm turning her lower leg through her heel towards me. Everything in tight. Okay, here to make sure that everything is tight, ask your partner to move their leg just gently. Can you move your leg? No, not much, right? If I'm loose, move your leg. She can turn her heel up. She has brave room here. So. Set your legs tight, set your grip tight. Make sure there's no space. Make sure her foot is sandwiched in here, that there's no space between my arm and the inside of her foot and my ribs and the outside of her foot. Yeah. Be in your elbow, lock your grip in, put your chin over the heel, curl the heels to your butt and think about lifting the heel first and then pushing. Like this. I'm not doing a big bridge here, and I'll hurt her. I'm just pushing with the inside of my leg here on the outside of her leg. Look at our knees here. Her knee points this way, my knee points the same way. When I push my knee away, her knee should follow. If I'm loose, look, my knee moves, but her knee doesn't move. That means you're not back healing enough. So curl everything in and they should move together. Lift, push, finish. And that's the lock, last lock for this video. And that brings in um, our two previous uh, beginner leg lock skills into this third finishing mechanic video. Now, part four, which is going to be the last one, we're going to look at transitioning, which is the hardest leg lock skill, I would say, uh, and which is why this is the last one. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like the video or if you would like to see in the future, if you want to see me cover something extensively. And uh, yeah, remember to like, subscribe to the video, subscribe uh, to the channel, all that stuff so my numbers can go up and I can get rich.